Hello and welcome back. My name is Kevin. This is Argument Parsing and Rust version 2. This is episode 4. First, uh, before we start, a quick apology. Um, last time I said we would be talking about flags next, I went back and sort of restructured my thoughts and notes on how this series of videos should go. And I determined that there's a, a slightly better way to structure this stuff. We're going to start with sort of the, the simple um, <clears throat> the simple topics, build on what we learn, and then move forward into more advanced topics. So before we get to flags, not that they're very advanced because they're not at all, they're one of the more simple topics, there are a few things we need to talk about first. So instead of flags, we're actually going to talk about args in general. So if you remember from the first video where I talked about uh, de design, the design of Clap, um, I'd said that I wanted it to have sort of a, a dynamic feel um, and that I didn't want there to be a whole bunch of different args or uh, structs for people to have to memorize and parse through documentation. Um, you know, I wanted people to be able to just use this sort of with a completer. Um, so instead of having things like option args and free args and flag args and switch args and all these different things, I created just one arg struct. Now, the way you use this arg struct is you create an instance of it and then you set various properties or settings on it and that sort of determines how it behaves or how it's utilized. Um, this allows you to kind of float back and forth as you play with your CLI design by just adding or removing or changing just a few lines and without having to sort of change all kinds of things about your source. Uh, so I think it's sort of a, a best of both worlds. Um, sort of feels very dynamic but then at the same time uh, behind the scenes is doing a bunch of other uh, static static work. So from a high level, you create an arg instance, you set some settings of it or some properties, and then you add it to an app or a subcommand. And then that's how you define a valid argument for that either app or subcommand. So it's a pretty simple process. If you remember in the the video where we did the demo, I have the documentation up right here. We actually defined three arguments. We defined an option, we defined a free or positional argument, and then we also defined a flag. And you can see some of these methods overlap between them all. That's because they're all just based off of the arg struct. Um, and then depending on which settings you set, kind of depend, kind of determine which style of argument it is. If we go over into the arg struct itself, the documentation, you'll see all of these various properties that we can set. So let's do that right now. Now, if we look, there's quite a few settings and properties. Don't be alarmed or overwhelmed. We are going to go over most of these, and not necessarily in this video, um, but over the course of the entire series, we are going to go over them. A lot of them can be grouped together, and if you know one, you kind of know how they all you, all of the ones in that group work. Uh, so some of these we're going to be able to get through pretty quickly. In this video, we're going to talk primarily just about how to create one, which is using the with name, and then how to add it to a uh, to an app or a subcommand later on because it's done in the same method. So, like I said, you create an arg instance and then you add it to an app struct. Let's go ahead and create one now as a practical demo. We still have our fake application, so we're gonna open that up. Now I'm gonna remove the template just to clean up the source a little bit. And I'm also going to remove the after help because we don't necessarily need those two things. The only other thing I have to change is I have to change the use statement and add the arg struct. All right, now that we do that, there's two methods of the of the app struct that allow us to add method or add arguments to our application. And that's the the arg. That's the arg um, method, or we have the args method, just plural. Now then, the only difference is the plural will take a, a slice of arg structs, whereas arg will just take a single one. So for now, right now, we're just going to use one. All we have to do to create an arg instance is we say arg with name, 
and then we give it some sort of string uh, string slice name. Um, this name, depending on the style of argument that it is, may be displayed to the user in the help text or in error messages or usage strings, unless there are certain things where you can override it and display something different. So you may want to name it something uh, somewhat friendly, um, but you also need to remember this name because this is the name that you're going to use to recall the uh, the values out of it after the parsing is complete. So let's just do uh, arg1, and then we're going to create a second one called arg2, and then we're going to create two more using the args, the plural, which is going to be arg3 and arg4. Now, because we haven't set any other properties except for creating them, by default, Clap will make these uh, free or positional arguments that are in sort of a first come, first serve uh, order. So if we run this now, the first thing I like to do whenever I add arguments to a particular application is I'll run the help message that Clap generates. And this will sort of give me an idea of one, whether or not I had an error in uh, building the argument, or two, if it came out as the argument that I was expecting it to. You know, I don't want to think I'm building an option or a, a switch and then come out with a free or positional uh, style argument. So here you can see we now have three different arguments, arg1, arg2, arg3, and arg4, which means we could also do things like one, two, three, and four, and it's gonna accept those just fine because Clap is expecting four arguments, or up to four arguments. None of these are required. Notice in the usage string, it has the square brackets, which traditionally means uh, optional. Now, what would happen if we did arg5? It's going to say, it's going to give us an error message that says, hey, we found argument five, uh, which we weren't expecting. Um, this is how we should have done it, arg1, arg2, arg3, and arg4. What would happen if we change that order? Remember how I said it's a first come, first serve basis? Let's switch up arg2 and arg1. This is going to get a little bit confusing. Sorry, I switched terminals right here. Um, okay. Now remember, we just switched arg2 and arg1. Notice here it says arg2 and arg1. Because we haven't defined what order they need to apply in, they just go in uh, from top to bottom, um, first come, first serve. So again, we can do this one, two, three, and four. We do a five, even our you should string is gonna say arg2 and then arg1. So if you're gonna use numbers uh, in, in your arguments, especially ones that are for free or positional, which we'll talk about in the next video, um, it's a good idea to understand which order Clap is putting them in uh, so that you don't confuse the user or e even yourself while, while building the application. All right, let's put this back in the regular order just so that we don't confuse ourselves anymore. But that's pretty much it. That's how we build an argument, or at least the very, very basics of it, building an argument and adding it to an application. The process will be the same for subcommands later on, but we'll see that in a future video. So next time we're gonna talk about uh, two more settings that we can set on an arg, or uh, actually rather, I think three, uh, three more settings that we can set on an arg in order to make it a positional or extend this positional slash free um, style argument. So. I appreciate you watching. I hope you enjoyed. Hope you learned something. Tune in next time.